to share a pleasure to be here with, with my friend. We often say that in Congress, this time we really mean it. And I'll tell you our, uh, our commitment, there's not an inch of daylight between us. And I would say this is true of the American public. When you ask them, there's probably no issue that unifies them more than should we care for our veterans. If you posed it in a survey, nothing would fall higher. The interesting thing about it is, though, only 7% of the American public are veterans. So while the public is there, they want to get it right, very few have a deep understanding of how this system works. And, and I've often said, I'm the VA's staunch supporter, I'll be their harshest critic, because it may be unfair, and, and I think the chairman is right, um, where we get accused of focusing just on the negative. The fact of the matter is, it is a zero-sum game. If one veteran waits too long, that's a failure. And I, I think if it's unrealistic to shoot for 100%, I, I think in any organization that has to be the goal. And I do think you heard some of the things that I think they do very well. I'm a, I'm a product of, of that system in terms of uh, GI Bill. Is how I got a college education. I think a, a you know a middle class kid from Nebraska that was one of the options that you took. A, a VA home loan that allows you to buy a home without the but those things are managed well and doing well. But as Jeff said, it is a large organization. I have a unique I think perspective on this in that I represent the Mayo Clinic um, in in Rochester, Minnesota. By most accounts, outside uh, folks saying one of the best healthcare systems in the, in the country, if not the world. It's the 10th largest, by the way, that the Mayo is, with the VA being the first. The VA somewhere around 42 billion, Mayo around 6 billion. Now they get 80 million visits per year. And uh, I think, for me, one of the problems I think we have is, Jeff is right, we have to simultaneously look at the things that go wrong. You, you cannot have abuses in the system. You cannot have mismanagement in the system. You cannot have cronyism in the system. And we need to continue to root those things out. But I think if that is a distraction from this big picture, big thing that we need to do, the VA does many things right. Ask, when I ask the Mayo Clinic, they will talk about if you want to get some of the best health care in the world, it's the Minneapolis Public Trauma Center. They're doing work on some of the, the extremity injuries and some of the research into those that's not being done in worlds. Eighty percent of our physicians are trained at VA hospitals. It's an integral part, and this is where I think we miss in this country, it's an integral part of our health care system in general. And you can't talk about the VA and VA health care reform well, in a vacuum outside of the larger issue. And, and I think and I think Chairman Miller has done a really good <coughs> job of this, asking VA to focus on their core competencies. For me, this is, you see a lot of folks who don't understand the issue very well, this becomes a proxy fight for privatization versus not privatization. Both are gross oversimplifications. They're intertwined very closely anyway. And, and I think the VA, when they do focus on their core competencies, um, they can get better if they're willing to look at, I think, again, that, that term of 21st century. I don't think it's as much reform as it is disruptive innovation. Healthcare innovation is changing rapidly. I see it at Mayo Clinic, and I think the VA could do that. But when we get bogged down again, when they try and build hospitals, they are not good at it. They are not good at the construction of hospitals. And that is not, a, again, a proxy fight for government versus non-government. It's just a reality. And we, as citizens, want the best care for veterans, we want it delivered in a timely manner because they earned it, and we want it to be cost effective. Whatever model that is, is the one we should go for. So I think now's a golden opportunity to do some of that. So there are many things going well. There are many people going to work at VA facilities that are giving up themselves, veterans themselves, delivering highest quality of care, but all you have to do is turn on the TV and see that's not the case elsewhere. And I think we're holding on to a system that is no longer keeping up with modern challenges. And that, that's our opportunity. So thank you. Before I get to the question of privatization and whatever other options you want to put on the table,